right, lovelies. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't shake the table, huh? Um, uh, I broke my stand that usually holds my phone. So that y'all can see it like this, and you wouldn't have to see my face. And But, um, it is what it is, so we will just overcome. But, this is day one. We're basically going to go over um, the cutting, the interfacing, um, etc. Um, I'm going to go over what I normally use, how I kind of keep the pieces together. Obviously, if you have your own method, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, I always have like these bins. Uh... It just helps me keep all my pieces together. I also, well you can't see it, but there's a cart back there that I also use. So different things because I have a really bad tendency of cutting things out and then not sewing it right away. So, um, but we're going to go ahead and go over all the pieces. So I have already cut all of mine out, but we'll go ahead and go over them and what I do instead of maybe what the pattern calls for. Um, which is mostly just trial and error and also just personal preference on things that I prefer to do. Um, I use waterproof canvas a lot so I don't have to do a lot of interfacing of my lining. Um, so if you also use waterproof canvas you do not need to interface. Uh, on the thing, in the pattern it also gives you this really neat, which I really like, um, checkbox. So you can make sure that you have all of your pieces. Um, it also has, I don't use them because I just uh, clip the pieces to it itself, but there's also um, this little sheet right here, which you could cut out and then attach to your pieces so you knew what they were and that you cut all of them. So I really like that about her patterns. Um, they're really, really nice. I actually sewed up all three, um, well, will be sewing up their cut out. All three of the patterns I suggested, so you'll be able to see them all in this cool print, by the way, that is coming on Thursday, what is today? Thursday. So I got the woven um, oracle. So it's black and white. It also comes in rainbow. So that should be really, really pretty. Um, I really do like this black and white and the details in this. This is the woven, so this is smaller. Um, I would say they probably average maybe about two inches. Yeah, about two inches on the cotton micra. They'll be about three inches big. So they'll be bigger on your cotton micra. But on our woven, all of our prints are a little minier, so they fit on bags better or uh, our doll makers or shoe makers talking about Jillian and Maria who's also on our strike team um, they're perfect for those kind of those kind of items um, like I said I typically just clip the pattern piece to it um, but whatever works for you it's fine so I probably should have put these in order before I did all, all everything but the biggest part is your strap so this is my cork, it calls for cork or leather or vinyl, um, two inches. So what I do if my piece is not big enough, I just sew it together. Um, it will cause a little crease here, but I usually put this on the bottom so you don't particularly see it. Uh, I also do it at the very ends of cork where it's a little thinner so that it's not so thick whenever you fold it down and then I just kind of uh, give a little bit of a uh, basting stitch right here to keep my seams down. Um, so this would work. You could also do this with fabric. There's a better way, much like you do bias binding, um, so you don't have as much bulk, but for uh, these, this typically works a little better. Um, and then you have two inches of whatever you want to be on top. Um, I cut it from the main fabric uh, and then I want to say and then the pattern piece it actually says to cut the fabric by 232's but um, with ours is 60 so 60 is perfect length for the, the shoulder strap. So I just cut it one continuous piece and this will be my top piece. 
And then so these two will go together, which we'll show um, tomorrow. Day two is straps and side assemblies. Um, but these two basically will go together. It actually is a really neat way she does it in her pattern um, that basically you don't have any fold over. So um, sometimes, you know, you're ugly or super bulky inside of your stuff. Uh, or by all means, if you don't like it that way, I've actually never made them that way. So this would be my first time too. Um, but I really liked it when I was looking at the pattern. I thought it was really cool that you have no exposed seam um, basically doing this. So I think that was really neat way to do that. So we'll go over all these pieces. Um, the front. So next is your front panel, right? So on the pattern piece, you will see um, that has this dividing line. I know that it has a measurement right here, and this is if maybe you didn't have uh, a print that goes together. Maybe it's just plain. You could cut out that box with using this measurements and then cut the diagonal line. But I just used the pattern piece. Um, so basically what I did, actually we'll show you. So say it was like, this is my back piece, but this you're gonna use this for your, your back and front piece. Um, but they're basically the same size. The only difference really is that this has a dividing line. Uh, but say you you have a print like this, if you were to cut it out as a complete piece first, and then divide the line um, your pieces would then match up when you sew the zipper on um, it's not super important but I like things to line up so I definitely did it that way um, I don't know if I can hold this up for y'all but basically this was one piece that I then cut so these two pieces went together like so so this will be your front part which goes to this, and then you will cut two more of this bottom. It says reverse, but basically you want to make it mirrored so that when you have your pocket, um, the good sides are facing each other. Like I said, this is waterproof canvas, um, so I didn't interface it. It doesn't need it. It is very durable. It's very, it's very thick, um, so you don't necessarily need to interface it if you use waterproof canvas. You can also get it from, I get mine from Fabric Warehouse Direct, um, but Walmart also sells it, but it's called Water Turf, or it's called something else. It's not called Waterproof Canvas, but it's the same concept. Um, so you could also get it from Walmart if that's what you would prefer. Um, so that is your front piece. So you need your top, your exterior, and then your two um, zipper linings. Let me clip this back together so I don't lose it. The next is your back panel. Um, again, it has, just has the pattern pieces, just a square. All of these things, if you don't want to use the pattern pieces, um, you do have measurements. So if you prefer to just measure and cut, you're welcome to do that too. Um, and then for the other exterior, where did you go? Oh, here they are. Um, these are my side pieces. I'm using cork, but you can use woven um, for the whole thing. And even for any of these bags, you could use cork, vinyl, um, woven, interface, cotton lycra. All of those pieces will work. Um, and then. So anything you would like, I just like to use the cork on the sides because it's just really pretty turquoise uh, color. Um, so this is your other exterior piece and then you will have your bottom. Um, yes, I know it is an oval. We will be sewing a circle like thing, but I promise you it's super easy and I will show you some really cool tricks um, to keep your stuff in line. I personally do not hand baste. I do not like hand basting. I basically will not do it. Um, but I have used staples or DTS, so any of that kind of stuff will definitely work for these kind of these kind of patterns. So that is basically. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. And then you have your top exterior side panels. Um, so basically, these are going to go on top of here 
uh, and you're gonna basically wedge your strap connector into here um, which obviously we will go over but all of these pieces I cut from the same material but you don't have to you can you know pick and choose the only thing is if you cut um, these from woven instead of vinyl or cork like I did um, you definitely will need to interface them um, pretty much anything that it's not cork and vinyl you're going to interface I personally do not use non-woven interface I don't really like 808 I think it wrinkles really bad so um, if you're not using waterproof canvas or you just want a little bit more sturdiness you could just double up on SF 101 all of these pieces I interface just with one layer because I am using waterproof canvas so that will give me some more structure um, so like I said you don't necessarily have to interface um, then you have I cut these out of cork also um, this is your lining top basically this is your zipper uh, panel for inside this is what you're going to use to connect your zipper to the back um, again I cut it out of cork so I did not interface it doesn't need any interfacing but if it's going to be cutting out of woven or anything not uh, sturdy, definitely do interface. And I would honestly um, interface it with two pieces of SF-101. Or you also are more than welcome to use 808. Like I said, I just don't particularly like it on woven stuff. It makes it wrinkle um, when you go to turn back. So, and now we have the lining pieces. So these are my two lining. They are going to go like this, um, not like this when you sew it in the back. So long side, I have two of them. Again, I made it out of waterproof canvas, so no interfacing necessary. Oh, I did forget a piece of the exterior. So on the back um, part, opposite the zipper, you do have another little pocket that will be going on the back. So this is um, the exterior pocket piece that's going to go on the back and then you have your interior which is a different size by the way so your interior is going to be slightly smaller than your exterior and she actually cut you different pieces so you don't have to use different size sewing allowances um, so that it'll fit nice and snug inside the back so again waterproof canvas and then I have my lining uh, this is your, well she calls it interior zip pocket facing. I typically don't use these, but because I normally do make my pockets out of waterproof too, but I'm definitely using the print this time. So I'm gonna try her method so that I can um, definitely follow more of the instructions for y'all. But basically this just gives it a little bit of sturdiness and then you're not cutting the square into here. Um, but here is your lining zipper pocket. Um, you'll be cutting two of these. Again, I interfaced with SF-101 instead of um, 808, but again, you're more welcome to sew it any way you would like. Um, and then for some of your other uh, interfacings, this is your base stabilizer. I used um, Decaville Heavy. Um, it's usually my preference. I do have some Peltex. Um, for things I need to slide it into versus attaching but anything that I can iron on um, I use uh, Decaville Heavy. You can get this at Joann's um, online etc and then you also will have your foam piece for your bottom so it definitely gives your bag definitely some sturdiness so basically when you put these on here you're going to attach this one um, to the bottom of your thing and then the the foam on top so I didn't want to attach these yet so that y'all could see um, what this would look like and then you also have a piece which I cut it and I don't know why it's not in my bin oh and there it is I fell in um, you will have a piece of 
uh, foam or you can you can use fleece if you so desire it's going to make your bag obviously a little not as sturdy you could also use decaville light i like to use decaville light on anything that i use um, all cork or vinyl on the outside when i use woven stuff i kind of like to use foam instead i think it gives it a better feel and then it doesn't wrinkle um, when you're turning bags as much but definitely on things that if you made it all cork on the outside um, and then say you used a really cool print on the inside, I think that would be a super neat looking bag too. Um, so then you'll just need, it is like 9.5 by 21. So those are all your, oh and then you need, which I just have a little scrap piece here of um, Decaville Heavy for your uh, magnet that you will be using. So, um, next we will go over some hardware. So you'll need either um, number five zippers, which you can just get from Joann's that have stoppers. Um, I use zipper tape, so um, I'm just using a piece of zipper tape for my zipper inside and outside. I got, ooh, let me take this out of the baggie, these really neat zipper pulls. Um, if you can see really neat shiny zipper pulls from Ashley so they're on the website um, I really like these they're really cool they're very sturdy and then I'll, I can go over how to put this on here tomorrow when we actually do that um, again I like to use my little bins to keep my stuff organized um, then you will need two D rings um, I use the triangular ones like this um, but a regular D-ring will work. I get these from Wizardry and also Emmeline Bags are my two go-to places. Um, there are definitely some awesome other ones um, but for basic hardware I do this for your specialty pools. There are so many. So Dolce, um, Zorel, they're all great places to, to get hardware from. And then you will also need two swivel and clips and I realized I didn't put it in here and I should have known better you will need um, one magnet so um, it doesn't have to be a super big one I like these really thin ones that I can get because um, they don't cause a lot of space so you just need a magnet. So da, 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 da. we can also go over you're going to interface everything um, with your SF 101 anything that is cotton lycra I highly suggest interfacing it and if you're using cotton lycra on the inside and outside of the bag, I would definitely um, double up to give it a little more sturdiness. Um, if you're using waterproof canvas, one layer is perfectly fine. Um, there's also other brands you could use, um, like I know some of you use Woven Fuse 2. I don't use that brand anymore, but um, something equivalent to that that gives it a little more sturdiness. Also perfectly acceptable um, for any of the ones that said non-woven which on the sheet itself tells you um, to do non-woven things uh, like the straps, the tabs, um, the linings of the zippers um, and the exterior slip pocket all says to use non-woven um, but because I usually backed most of that stuff with waterproof canvas I don't find it necessary and my bag will definitely be sturdy enough with just the foam um, but you're more than welcome to use whatever you would like to use um, I think that is all I really have from for today uh, just make sure when you were ironing down your like I can feel this one I try to interspace my stuff oh this is the zipper so I'm not too worried the lining um, when I do my stuff, I definitely do 
try to wait a day um, just so that you can make sure that it actually adhered well and is not messed up or anything. This one has a little bit of like where it had a wrinkle in it, but this is the zipper um, pocket. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, but if you needed to, you could peel these up and then refuse. But I think that is all. Oh, and one last item. Mine are coming in the mail. So hopefully should be here today. Actually, um, is a little piece of zipper tail, but I use, I don't think I have any white or um, nickel ones, but I definitely have some of a different color and I can show you them. Basically, it's just a little zipper in, which I'll show you um, when we do the zipper on that day. Um, so you'll be able to see it. So just come on. I hope this was beneficial. Uh, definitely give me some feedback. I am definitely more used to doing sew alongs for clothes versus bags. So if you feel like I missed anything or you need me to go over something more, I am perfectly happy to answer any questions you'll have. So come on back for day two, which is tomorrow where we will be doing the um, straps and the side uh, panels. So, all right, bye guys.